Sheriff Wayne Ivey of Florida will be the first to tell you he's one of the most politically incorrect sheriffs in the country, and he offers no apology. In the wake of recent terror attacks, both here at home and abroad, Sheriff Ivey posted a video on social media calling it as he sees it, urging law-abiding gunners to carry their firearms and be prepared to stop an active assailant. It's no surprise his message went viral. As Sheriff Ivey told me, he wants to make clear, you need to call 911, but that you are the first line of defense. Take a look. Terrorists and active shooters know that our citizens have been coached to run and hide and then patiently await help. Attacks where defenseless citizens are being murdered and critically injured. I think political correctness at every level is taking its toll on us. And I think the average citizen is, quite frankly, tired of it. They don't want to hear the agenda line. What they want to hear is the truth and to help them be prepared to protect themselves. And your video, you do not sugarcoat it. This is real. This is a different time we're in. It's a different world. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's war. It absolutely is. Doing nothing, or even worse, sitting back and saying, it won't happen here, or it won't happen to me, is not going to save your life. Get back! Get back! I'm sure the people on that bridge said it wasn't going to happen there. I'm sure the people in the nightclub and the airport and the Christmas party in San Bernardino all had the same mindset that we're safe. And unfortunately, the game's changed. My message was, if you are a concealed carry permit holder, carry your gun with you. It's not doing you any good at the house. It's not doing you any good in the car. If it's permitted, carry it with you. We don't know where that next attack is coming from. So why would we not want our citizens to be prepared? Why would we not want to give them every tool they can to protect themselves? And even in the wake of the shooting in Virginia, at the ball field with the Republican members of Congress. Anti-gun Senator Schumer admitted. I could not be more grateful that Capitol Police were there at a time to prevent this attack from being any worse than it was. He would have had us basically in a cage and just had a, a free fire. We were sitting ducks. We had nothing to fight back with but bats. And yet the Schumers of the world, oh, they want to deny us, you, me, everybody, their right to protect themselves. That's right. But what more has to happen while you can have your opinion, you cannot avoid reality. There's an enemy out there. Their motivation may be different, but their intent is to kill people. 911. Calling 911, the attacks already happened. Law enforcement is mocked to with our hair on fire trying to get there to help. One of the best law enforcement agencies in the country have a response time in minutes, but a violent criminal will take your life in seconds. You have to be prepared to be the first line of defense. At that moment, in, in those seconds, you are going to have to make a decision to save your life and the life of those around you. What I will tell everybody is it doesn't just happen because you go get a concealed carry permit and a gun. Go practice. Go put yourself in situations. I'm a big believer in ask yourself, what if? We put on a course called Self-Defense Through Tactical Shooting and Decision Making. We have people come from other states, from other counties, to take our course. We created the four A's of survival. There is no order to them. Arm yourself, awareness, avoidance, attack. But our course is as much about when not to shoot as it is when to shoot, but it's definitely preparing you for being able to do it. I take great exception to hearing somebody say, well, I'm not sure having citizens protecting themselves is a good idea. These are our citizens. These are the people that, quite frankly, elect me to office. We trust them to do that. I trust our citizens to help us protect this community. And I think, unfortunately, that's not always the case as, as we go around and look in other parts of the country. I can tell you in Brevard County, our citizens, they protect us just as much as we protect them. It's a partnership. You've testified before Congress. Mm -hmm. When it comes to national reciprocity and getting in on the books, what would you want to tell lawmakers? I think it's pretty obvious that we need that. If we trust somebody to have have a concealed carry in Florida. We trust them to have it in New Jersey, New York, Colorado. I think it also creates a great standard for the country so that everybody is getting the same training, going through the same process. A lot of times people will say, we need gun control. Listen, we have gun control. We have measures that good, law-abiding people go through when they want to get a gun. What we don't have is criminal control. That's what we're missing. There is no sanctuary for criminals. There is no place where a criminal should feel safe. So the concept of sanctuary cities is so foreign to me, it doesn't even make sense. We can't afford to be politically correct. Actually, what we should be is just correct. No matter who you are, what your position is on guns, there's no denying the fact that the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. 
If you roll up my sleeve, I have the Constitution tattooed on my arm. I took an oath to support the Constitution. But sheriffs are the first line of defense for our Constitution. We stand in opposition to anyone that wants to take away our constitutional rights and anyone that wants to harm our citizens. I still think America is the greatest place on the planet. I love this country. I bleed red, white, and blue. And you know, something that my dad told me years ago, and I lost my dad in 1997 to cancer, but he's still the greatest mentor I ever had in my life. He said, this is America. It's okay for us to fight amongst ourselves, but nobody can mess with us. And I think we have to get back there. Preparing Americans to protect themselves is a conversation we need to have right now. I never thought I would see a time where our rights would be under attack, where our Second Amendment would be under attack. I never thought I'd see a time where it was accepted not to stand and put your hand over the heart for the national anthem. And I hope I live long enough to see us come out of that tailspin.